The Twins released their minor league catcher, Derek Bender. That SOB got every single little bit of what he deserves. James, have you heard about this kid? So I heard about this, but I didn't really have the time to do the research. So please enlighten me. I- I'm dying to know what your thoughts are, and then I'll give you my uh, my thoughts. I'm going to say this straight up. This This kid did something that's not crazy unknown to have happened before. But his team, uh, again, he was a single A affiliate in Fort Myers with the the Twins organization, the Mighty Muscles. Is that what they are? The Mighty Muscles. That's a new team name. That, I don't think that's what they were that were before. That's actually, I love minor league team names. Just <laughs> so, you know what? Where do we live? Uh, what do we like to do? What do people do around us? Let's throw it against the wall and see what sticks. I love it. The Mighty Muscles from Fort Myers, Florida, in the, in the, the Florida State League. He is the catcher that the, the way the leagues work down there is they have a first half and a, and a second half. Mm-hmm. And if you win the first half, you go to the playoffs. If you win the second half, you go to the playoffs. If you win both, then they take like the second best record type of thing. So they were the first half. They kind of sucked. Second half, they were really good. 35 and 25. But they're right there. And they had a double header. And if they win, they, they keep their playoff chances alive. There's only a couple more games left. So they're right there okay he decided amongst himself that he didn't want to go to the playoffs which is tough and i'm going to say this in the minor leagues you don't get paid for the playoffs you get paid nothing so it's it there's zero incentive you get like a hundred dollar bonus at the end or maybe like a, a whatever watch it's nothing basically it's like overtime but you don't get paid for it. and which right. is tough at the end of a after the end of a long grueling season where you don't get paid a whole lot anyways and then they tell you to work for free he started telling the other team what pitches were coming. Oh. So he was basically screwing everybody, decided amongst himself he didn't want to play in the minor leagues or didn't want to play in the playoffs and go home. And so they just they um, he started giving him the signs, started telling every batter what was coming. I, I'm going to say this really quick before I get your idea on. Um, absolutely screw this guy to hell. I, this is fighting. This like this. You... This kid should get his ass kicked in that locker room because there are kid, there are guys that their careers might have depended on that inning. Yeah. You know, like he, he's taking somebody else's career, a pitcher's career in his hands. And, and as you know, yeah, we can we can roll our eyes called eyewash all we want. But, dude, those numbers matter. And that's one of the last games of the year. Like, that's your last impression. This is going into the offseason. This like I'm on the other side of that making decisions and I'm not looking at the one outing. I'm looking at their overall numbers. And I'm like, dude, you gave a five. What the hell happened? Like yeah. you must have ran out of it. You didn't want to be there. I don't know what it is. And that might have made the decision on whether you go to the next level or not. F this guy. Dude, if this guy was my teammate, I would have beat the living hell out of him after the game. If I was the pitcher and I found out he was giving away signs... Or even if you were the pitcher and I found out he was giving away your signs, I would have smacked him so freaking hard that he would be on the floor now. How dare you? You're a professional baseball player. Your lot in life is to play baseball. When did playing baseball become a chore? That's first and foremost. You're a minor league baseball player. You've dreamed about being in the show your entire life. And you're saying, oh, this is a problem. I don't want to play any more baseball. I don't want you on my team. I don't want you in my organization. And you deserve a freaking beating. Absolutely. You're out. You're out for me. If I'm your teammate, you're out. If I'm in front office, I am I am fighting to get you out of this organization. And I will take the L on that. I will leave my job if you keep me players like this in the organization. You can. There might be some art, some conversations about where he you know, he'd have to get in front of the whole team organization and apologize. And still, I would never trust him with my pitchers. He was the 188th pick, which is the sixth rounder, which is a high pick, very high pick. And that was this year. That was that was 2024. This is the sad part for me is when I look at this and think you are so focused on getting the season done and doing nothing, going home and sitting on your ass. You'd rather do that than play the game that you loved. With six-year-old you, what would six-year-old you think about that, right? What would eight-year-old you, what would 12-year-old you think? about all the hours of work you put in, and now, guess what? Go the fuck home. Like, if you, I was a six-year-old, I would say, you're a poo-poo head. That's the way I always looked at a lot of things, and I would I would look this in my career. There are times, don't get me wrong, dude, you're, it's minor league seasons are long, they're hard, they're grind, you're on a bus, 
you're away from home. You don't, you, you like, they get paid a lot more than we used to get paid. Uh, we got $850 a month, by the way, was our paycheck. And half of that am- automatically went to the clubbies. That was out. And then, then you had taxes, well, 850, then you had taxes. Then half of that went to the clubbies and you're just, and you got whatever you're living off your signing bonus. I was fortunate. had a lot of money. A yeah. lot of guys don't, but it's a grind sometimes, man. But that grind is what makes it so great. And that grind is a lot of the things that I miss right now uh, of playing baseball. It's the grind. Is the sitting on the bus, the the 3 a.m. car uh, card playing on the road trip to West Virginia. I don't even uh, anywhere or through West Virginia. And you're just sitting there playing cards with your teammates. You're just talking about life, talking about what you're going to do when the offseason is happening. Like, he will never get that chance again. Yeah. And he chose because he wanted to go home and, and just go home a day earlier. Sorry, dude. Like, you don't have what it takes. Let me throw you a curveball, and I'm very curious to your answer. What's worse, what he did or Pete Rose? Here's the problem is I knew the curveball was coming. It was almost as if you told me a curveball was coming. <laughs> Who is worse, him or Pete Rose? Ooh. Pete Rose just said so much. That's the hard part. I would say this. If there was one game where this dude's giving the signs and Pete Rose bet on his team, this dude. This dude's way worse. Pete Rose, all he ever did was bet on his team. Yeah. Okay? That's not as egregious as against it, right? Or just betting on baseball. The problem is you have so much information within the game. Like, I know who's not feeling good on the other team. We talk about it. We have dinners the night before, all that stuff. Pete Lowe's lied so much about it. That's that's my problem. Just saying, if you take apples to apples and you say, this guy bet on, on, ba- bet on baseball and the other white guy gave away the signs, I I, I think the, cat, the catcher is the biggest the douchebag. Yeah. Uh, and I agree with you. So basically, to me, if this guy turns out to be the next Otani, I'm keeping him out of the hall. 